Hi, this is Anna London with Cyvergence, and in this episode, we're going to talk about the importance of journalism, you know, how critical it is for society. You know, this seems to be okay, yes, duh, right? Um, it doesn't take a rocket science scientist to figure that out, but, you know, I'm going to discuss 15 benefits of journalism and why I have decided to take my career on this path. Right, I have a 30-year background in cybersecurity, okay, uh, supporting FBI, Department of State, you know, USAID, right, uh, Department of Labor, you know, a variety of um, government and, of course, commercial entities alike. I have also, you know, um, been an educator, right? Um, so, you know, at the college level, the university level, and I, of course, teach and run apprenticeship programs, even from my own cyvergence.ai, right? So I do consulting and, of course, education. You know, education and consultation go hand in hand. And part of that, too, is feeds into the journalism realm, right? Where we educate, we inform, okay? Um, and I think it is absolutely imperative that, you know, society be reminded at how critical journalism is, but not just any journalist, not just you know, the citizen journalist, if you will. And the reason why I say that is because with citizen journalism, which is great, you know, everybody is pointing and clicking, right, with their iPhones and, and what have you, right? And so you can get real-time real time access to perspectives, though, right? Because just like um, the journalist that posted um, the picture of, of that 12-year-old uh, boy, uh, that was at a um, a football game, right? And he had a red and a black face. He was dressed up as a as a Native American, you know, Indian chief. And, um, you know, so again, the perspective of the photo that was taken was just the side of the face that was black, not the front of the face where it showed the red and the black face. And so then, therefore, that person's perspective, right, and, and use that photo, right, um, I feel irresponsibly, right, in order to invoke, you know, outrage, okay, against a 12-year-old boy, right? So, you know, journalism also comes with a sense of responsibility and the fact that we can't just trust everything we see or read, okay, whether it be social media, people are talking, but again, that's perspective. With journalism, right, and proper journalism requires sourcing, okay, uh, legitimate sources, okay? Because again, perspective and perception um, is one thing. Everybody has opinions, right? Everybody takes different views of things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the truth, okay? The, the truth ends up getting clouded when everyone is allowed to just speak, you know, and without, without any type of accountability, okay? So, and again, videos and things can absolutely be, you know, uh, done where it just is misleading, right? More so than anything. So with that said, this is why I am, you know, I wrote anyways, I write, I'm a writer, you know, and I've submitted to many different, you know, my articles have been published in multitude of magazines like Brains Magazine and what have you. But I really want to hone in on the journalistic aspect uh, for, you know, this phase of my career path. Um, and just reinvoke, you know, and revive what it is to mean to be a true journalist, right, in the field. Um, journalism, obviously, has many positive benefits for society. You know, it's a watchdog for government, and journalists can ask tough questions and hold our elected officials accountable. And they also help to keep the public informed about what's happening in their communities and around the world, right? But again, with responsibility and accountability also, not just on the government officials, right? But also on the journalists themselves and those broadcasting companies. Because if they are outright lying and it's found that they're lying, they should be held accountable. And it should go both ways. Fox News was, of course, fined and held accountable for misleading information, right? Um, and again, you know, but I've seen a lot of misleading and just outright lies um, that have been promoted on multiple networks. So again, these broadcast companies, 
these media organizations and journalists really should be held to account. Because otherwise, what is it? It's just tabloid, right? It's just tabloid. Nobody trusts the tabloids. So now, unfortunately, because of the lack of accountability in the journalism sector, right, you know, they would just carte blanche on on just anything because they're looking for sensationalism they're looking for the likes the clicks the views and they really don't care if they destroy someone's career or get somebody canceled right without even allowing okay the investigation to com- be completed right before they allow public opinion to take hold right and i think it's very responsible so i want to be I want to go in and, of course, yes, maybe it's idealistic to think that I can change anything. But the only, the only person really I can change, you know, and be accountable for is myself. So at least for me, okay, I'm going to choose, okay, to be a journalist that helps our society but through, but through truth, you know. And, you know, and, and just the underbelly of substance, right? Um, not just surface stuff either. And the thing is, there's not that many tech journalists out there either. So I'm, you know, I want to be investigative, you know, going to investigative journalism, but I also want to hone in on tech and not just the high level stuff. And yes, I have some articles on my portfolio website where they're kind of some high level comparison and contrast, but I want to take it a lot deeper, right? I want to take a lot deeper, um, and because I am an engineer, right, I can speak to other engineers, you know, other entrepreneurs, other CTOs and CISOs and, and, and CIOs, right, about, you know, deep dive, you know, cybersecurity implications, configurations and all that, right? So go into the, the, the how and, of course, the why, right? But do a lot more deeper dive than I've seen anywhere um, in any periodical um, at all, actually, they don't really go deep enough. Okay, honestly, and I'm not just talking about features and functionality. I'm also talking about the person, you know, um, and of course the teams. The teams need to be highlighted as well, right? Those engineers that are building, building the products, right? So I don't want to just interview, you know, the CEOs and entrepreneurs. That's awesome, okay, as well. But I want to interview the people that are making it happen, also, okay. So let's talk about those 15 benefits I'm going to walk through. And yes, this is not rocket science. Everyone should know this. I just want to, I'm doing this because I'm really passionate about, you know, about this career and being legitimized as a journalist, right? And that's why I've enrolled in, I'm a journalism student, you know, um, you know, journalism and public communications, right? Because I want to do it right. I just don't want to be just a, yet another citizen journalist that is posting things or reposting things without, without you know, sourcing things. And, um, you know, j- citizens should be held accountable too. You know, community notes is one thing that helps a little bit. But again, that's somebody's perspective as well. And, uh, you know, who's watching the watchdog? Who's watching the community notes people also? Because they can put... A note on there saying that that is invalid, but to what degree, to what end, right? Um, and of course, is that person's perspective correct also, right? So I want to learn how to do it right, okay, and bring some, you know, bring some sanity back into the journalism sector, if you will. You know, so all right, let's let's go let's go through these, right? Fifteen. So journalism allows others to be informed, right? So the classic image of a journalist is that someone who brings information, you know, to the public, but that should be responsibly, uh, done responsibly too. And, um, I've seen journalists also, you know, uh, post, you know, uh, battle plans, battle strategies, right. And it, it's, it's a national security threat when they do that. Right. So don't do that. Okay. Uh, nobody needs to know the battle strategies, where our troop movements are, what we're sending, where, Budget is one thing, okay, but the nuances of that budget, you know, how many missiles, how many tanks, right, how many, how many people, you know, how many soldiers and marines and, and all that and where our ships are located and what have you, um, nobody needs to know that, not even the public, okay, and the reason for that, like I said, is, you know, if you read Sun Tzu, The Art of War, right, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just basic war strategy 101, right? And it's OPSEC, right? Operational security. So I think that needs to stop. So bring into the public, but again, with 
uh, with reason and with common sense not to put people at risk of being harmed, okay, number one. Uh, and, and number two, you know, should not become within themselves a national security threat by revealing classified information or troop movements or battle strategies, right? There are many ways we all know that news stories, articles, and reports allow people to be more aware of what's happening around them, right? And it can include everything from understanding government policies to knowing about important developments within, you know, our communities, right? So... You know, and of course, you need to provide transparency. So another role of journalists is to provide transparency. And although some people might think that there should not be any secrecy on the part of elected officials or those in power, this type of media coverage allows for accountability within these groups. And see, right now, right with the cancel culture and, and of course, the different narratives, it is becoming more of, you know, a dictatorship, if you will, right? Um you know, the people are in power are going against the other people that do not agree with that narrative, right? And that's wrong. Um, that's wrong. The First Amendment is, you know, freedom of speech should not include really hate speech, right, at all. Um, you know, but the truth, you know, people need to be aware of the truth. And people should be allowed, even if you disagree with them, they should be allowed to state their opinions, right? But journalists, though, have a higher standard to meet when it comes to validating those sources and ensuring what they are putting out, what they are disseminating to the public, is in fact truth. From the moment the pen hits the paper, the fingers hit the keyboard, okay? So journalism should hold people accountable, but, you know, turnabout's fair play. The journal, Like I said, the journalist should also be held accountable, okay? You know, journalism can hold individuals and groups accountable for their actions, and by bringing these situations to the public eye, journalists allow others to see issues and understand why they might be important. Okay, and this awareness can lead to people taking action in support of their values or their relevant causes. But be careful because we don't want to incite violence, right? And that's my point is, if you're irresponsible and putting, you know, um, mistruths, you know, untruths out there, um, and then something happens because of that, right? I mean, you know, again, I mean, it's, you, you need to really be responsible with what you're putting out there and ensure that it's fact, it's fact-based, okay? Um, you know, uncovering stories, right? So, um, you know, journalists often seek out untold stories and work hard to investigate them thoroughly before releasing any information that could tarnish the reputation of an individual organization. Let me read that again. Okay, journalists often seek out untold stories and work hard to investigate them thoroughly before releasing releasing any information that could tarnish the reputation of an individual or organization. Right. And again, allow the investigation to ensue and remind the public to allow the evidence to lead, not opinion. Right. Um, in many cases, this means that journalists work together to obtain facts. Okay, facts and share what has been uncovered with readers and viewers all over the world, okay? And the result is that corruption becomes less likely because those involved cannot hide from their misdeeds anymore. However, when journalists and media companies are part of that corruption, ah, then what happens, right? Then there is a skewed, a misguided sense of the truth, okay? And depending upon where you're getting your information from, you're actually not giving the opportunity for the people to make a decision on their own concerning the truth. What you're doing is you are either, you know, leaving out certain things of the truth or you're providing a biased representation of the, you know, and it's, cor it's corruption. It's corruption all the way down into the, into the media, right? And I've seen it because you can see too, you can tell that everyone is, is centralized on it because, CNN, MSNBC, right? Um, you know, ABC, you know, they're, they're all say the same thing. You can flip the channels and they're saying the exact same thing. And so that's the narrative. That's the rhetoric, right? That's the message that, you know, that these media broadcaster, you know, leaders want them to hear. And of course, and it was already shown that, you know, the politicians are in fact using you know, the social media platforms, right, to mislead the public, right, mislead the public. So, you know, the Hunter Biden laptop, for instance, right, you know, and there's a lot of different things where, you know, Elon Musk had uncovered, you know, right, about, you know, the Twitter files, right? 
So, you know, where, you know, the politicians were working with Twitter and, of course, Meta, you know, Facebook, um, all of them, right? Um, the oligarchs, the tech oligarchs um, and social media and purposely censoring information, you know, so, you know, but nothing was done about it and nothing would have been done about it had, had you know, Elon Musk actually not purchased Twitter right now X which is kind of scary. Hate him or love him. You know, Elon Musk, at least, you know, has kind of uncovered some things that, you know, helps you to understand and realize. I mean, the truth is truth, whether you like it or not, right? The truth is truth. And a lot of people want to navigate off the the X platform, right? Because, you know, but see, Elon is allowing everybody to speak. So, you know, he, you know, he is a proponent for the First Amendment rights, right? Is he a lawyer? No, he's not. He is a person that's trying to make a difference, okay? And of course, he's going to make mistakes along the way, right? Um, but I, I think I, I like how, though, he is allowing everybody to speak up, right? Everybody has their, has their own opinions, okay? And yes, hate speech, you know, when you speak anti-Semitic Semitic tropes and and those types of things, absolutely, right? Those should be monitored, action should be taken appropriately, etc. right? So, and even the law, right? Um, you know, also, in, unless you're inciting violence or something like that, right? So, again, but again, words can also be misinterpreted as well, the meaning, you know, and that's kind of concerning too. So, but again, as journalists, we have a responsibility to the public that what we're putting out is in fact truthful and well sourced with authoritative, authentic sources, right? And not to go after people's, you know, reputations and things. You're just reporting the fact. That's the way it should be. Just reporting the fact. Let the evidence lead, right? Let the evidence lead the report, you know? Um, so, you know, journalism should encourage change, right? So over time, journalistic efforts have the power to influence changes in our society. And whether it is bringing attention to a specific issue or paving the way for new methods of reporting and storytelling, journalists often play a huge role in encouraging people to think differently about certain situations. And in some cases, this awareness can lead to real change within groups or even entire countries, okay? So again, my thing is too, if you're reporting on it though, you know, action has to be taken, okay, regardless, because, you know, it's just like going through an audit, right? An auditor comes in, they, they find findings and, and, you know, gaps in nonconformities, right, in your environment, right? Provides the report of findings, you know, to that said stakeholder, that said organization. And the organization can choose to take action to remediate those findings, those gaps, right, and make changes, or they can choose not to, okay? So I know journalism is about just speaking the fact and allow the public to kind of make a determination for themselves, right? And it should encourage change. It should encourage change from the top down and the bottom up. But again, this is extremely why, right? Because it can affect policy changes. It can affect you know laws and regulations and a variety of things, whether somebody goes out and protests or not, right? Based upon a lie, right? Or the truth, right? And so again, we have we have a responsibility, right, to provide the truth, period. Not fake news. Okay, not you know, it shouldn't be tabloids. Mainstream media has become the tabloid. You know, it's become the tabloids, right? And you just can't trust it. And it's unfortunate because I've always had the utmost respect for, you know, journalism as a whole, right? And and they are hugely critical, right? In informing and in informing, keeping everybody informed, you know? So journalism can also inspire others to take action too, right? So this might be in the form of writing their own stories, working towards social change, or simply becoming, you know, more informed citizens, right? By seeing the dedication and hard work that all journalists, you know, well, I shouldn't say all, most journalists put in their work, it becomes easier for others to feel motivated and passionate about making a difference in the world. And again, there's a lot of journalists that actually do really hard work, right? Uh, they go out and seek the truth. They go to the source. They don't report on third-party sources, right? Um, they don't put it out and then ask for forgiveness later. They, they actually are there on the front lines, right? And they are trying to obtain the truth firsthand, you know, and provide relevant 
you know, truthful, factual information. But others are lazy. You know, like mainstream media, I feel, has become lazy because all they're doing is copy and pasting. They're just taking something, a meme or something, and then just boom and putting it out there. And without, you know, any ramifications or at all to them, you know, they ruin people's lives. They they just do it for sensationalism, right? And and views and likes. And that's wrong. You can't call yourself a journalist then if you're not really going to, going to uphold the ethics, okay, of journalism, right? And 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 you know, be the be the informer of truth and not misleading and manipulating the masses, right? So, you know, unfortunately, in any society, there will always be examples of injustice, right? And journalists also play an important role in bringing these situations to light so the public can see them and work together to address them. You know, often it's only when issues are made visible that any real progress can be made in solving them, right? And sometimes, too, even the world may not believe or may not listen initially, right? But at least, at least the public has been informed, right? Um, journalism also offers a voice to the voiceless. So in many cases, journalists are the only ones who give a voice to those that might not otherwise have one. And this can include victims of abuse or violence, people living in poverty, and others who have been marginalized or discriminated against, right? Which includes women overseas, right? And here, sex trafficking, child trafficking, everything, right? You know, by sharing stories and experiences, journalists can help humanize individuals who might otherwise be seen as a statistic or nameless faces, right? Journalism also educates the public, right? So one of the most important roles of journalism is to educate the public on a wide range of topics. And this can include everything from current events to history lessons, right? Uh, and, you know, what's going on in the war, et cetera. But again, being responsible about it, um, you know, helping people though through uh, through reporting, right? By providing access to accurate information, journalists play an essential role in helping people understand the world around them. You know, journalists also, like mentioned earlier, can point out corruption, and they should, even though some people might not want to know about corruption within groups or governments. Journalists help by pointing out any potential issues that could affect, you know, our own lives, right? So, I mean, we shouldn't be telling people what they want to hear, Okay, but what they need to hear, okay, to make an informed decision based upon fact and risk, right, you know, of their own lives and what have you. So whether it's a vote, you know, it should be based upon fact, okay, of that, of that candidate, okay. So, you know, we can, you know, do this through reports on specific incidents, as well as larger pieces, you know, designed to highlight systematic failures, which need to be addressed immediately if we hope to turn things around, okay? Journalists can also provide perspective. So over time, new stories help provide perspective on events and issues, which initially might seem confusing or complicated. So in cases where there's conflict in another country, journalists can often work to point out who stands to benefit from the situation based on past actions of certain groups or leaders. Okay, and this can allow people to understand the real reasons why incidents might have occurred and what actions they can take to prevent them from happening again or resolve future problems before they get worse. Right, and see the different perspectives, right? As, a, as an American, right, you're already going to have, based upon your values and things here and our Western ideals going to another country, you're already going to have that underlying bias anyways, right? So it's important to just, you know, ask open-ended questions, you know, take photographs of different angles, right? Um, and ensure that everyone's voice is heard and so people can see the different perspectives of, of other people all over the world, right? So, you know, that can allow people to understand the real reasons why incidents might have occurred and what actions, you know, they can take to prevent them from happening again or to resolve future problems before they get worse, right? And just, you know, inform and enlighten your people as a whole, you know, the globe, Okay. Uh, journalism can also help communities come together. So in many cases, being part of a community means caring about what goes on within it and being willing to do something when something needs to change for the better. And in many instances, journalists encourage this type of community engagement by highlighting problem areas and ways that people can get involved. You know, so for instance, reporting on the environment impact, you know, the environmental impact of, of course, fact factory farming, right, might help people think about their own food choices in a different way, right? 
Um, journalism you know, also builds bridges, right? So in a world that is increasingly connected, journalists play an important role in helping people understand the different points of view. And this can be done through stories that focus on individuals from other countries or cultures, as well as pieces that explore new perspectives on hot and button topics. And by providing access to a variety of different voices, journalists can help to build bridges between groups who might not otherwise have anything in common. Right. I like how in this case, though, the citizen journalism aspect, of course, that Elon Musk is trying to promote, you know, the spaces, the Twitter spaces is attempting to do that, you know, offer people from different perspectives, different world and hopefully, you know, build bridges through proper healthy discord. Right. And allow everyone's voices and, and sides and perspectives to be heard, you know, and, you know, um, you know, I think it, I think that is incredibly important, okay? But it also is important to have subject matter experts of different things on there as well. And they have. They, so they have had, you know, a few folks where they identify the host and, and what have you or the co-host will have somebody that is, you know, um, you know, they have verified their background, right? And they they can provide some insight from the subject matter expertise perspective vice just a regular opinion right uh from the common from from everybody you know the common people right that may or may not even have an understanding a full understanding of the topic being discussed right but but they're reading memes or they're reading what they think is going on and then that's what they are echoing right and so again when the october 7th you know massacre happened you know, there were Palestinian there, you know, Palestinian specific rooms and all they were doing in there, though, were broadcasting hate against the Jews, hate against the West, right, saying it was Israel's fault, all these things. But that's all it was one sided. But then on the flip side, there was also the Israeli rooms also where, of course, different perspective, right, different perspective, right, wrong or indifferent. So, you know, um, uh, so I like the rooms that are actually combined where you can hear the different perspectives, right? And I will jump in and out of rooms, right? And I will listen, right? Um, but I also think it's incredibly important that, you know, um, you know, because you need to provide access to a variety of different voices, okay? So journalists can help build bridges between groups who might not otherwise have anything in common, right? So I think X Space does, actually does a really good job or at least trying to do that, right? I think that's a really good forum for that. You know, whether you like, like I said, Twitter or not, or X spaces or not, I think that, that the X spaces and the way they are transforming on that platform, I think are definitely a positive for the world. There's real time insights, right? And, and so the citizen journalism aspect is good, but it can also be bad because see, the thing is, is that you have folks that are reporting on, you know, the good and the truth, but then it gets overpowered and clouded by a lot of the nonsense, the noise, right? So, you know, because again, a citizen journalist doesn't have to live up to ethics, right? They can just post whatever uh, without cause or without, you know, ramifications. Uh, but journalists, right? That's what I'm saying is, is in, in the journalism, we need to bring forth the public trust, okay? The public trust. And through, you know, breathing and vocalizing and writing the truth, Okay, and not let our opinions about anything. Look, I might not like the left. I might not like the right. Okay, um, I might not like whatever. But still, regardless, the truth is the truth, regardless of what I like or I don't like, right? And unfortunately, in journalism as a whole, it's been clouded. And you hear CNN that is far left thinking. Fox is right, far right thinking. There's some moderates on there. Um, which I appreciate, but MSNBC is far left, ABC is far left, right? And they, but they all say the same thing. There's no originality to it. And you can tell, right? They're not writing their own stuff. It's scripted, okay? It's scripted information. And so they're all saying the same thing, okay? The same thing. And, you know, but again, a lot of it's biased. It's not even the truth, there might be a little bit of truth sprinkled, sprinkled in there, but it's been overshadowed by, you know, whatever the, you know, the politicians want to be spewed, you know, whatever those broadcast, you know, presidents and people are paid to speak, right? So if there's corruption, like I said, all the way through, not just the politicians, but also in the media is corruption, right? To, for instance, help people stay in power, right? Uh, so, 
you know, they continue to spew things against their uh, competitors, you know, or what have you. They, they um, you know, I mean, you should have the opportunity to listen, just like the candidates. You should have the opportunity to listen to either. And I think they should remove Democrat and Republican as a whole. Like, it should just be people there, okay? And you shouldn't have to just because you're Democratic, you know, Democrat, for instance, have to side with everything the Democratic Party, you know, agrees with, right? We're all humans. So we're all going to have difference of opinions, and it should be respected in that way. Similarly, you know, so just because you're a Democrat doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that's completely left-leaning, right? Or if you're, uh, you know, if you're Republican, I mean, they've been, the left has done an outstanding job in winning the propaganda war, Right? And they have been, everyone that's a Republican or identifies a Republican, they've been them all as racist. And that's furthest from the truth. They're even calling black folks that are Republicans white supremacists. How asinine is that? I mean, honestly, what people aren't allowed to think for themselves, you know? I mean, come on. You know, so it just, it just baffles me. It's just the complete insanity, Okay. So let's talk about encouraging social change because, and that's again another reason why I want to, you know, be an, um, you know, a verified, you know, um, journalist, right? Um, and I want to earn, I want to earn that right, right? I want to earn the public's trust, right? So when journalists do their jobs well, okay, they can help inspire people to take action and make changes in their communities. And in some cases, this might mean starting a petition or attending a protest. But in other cases, it might simply mean take you know talking to friends and family about the issues, right? So, um, you know, but the thing is, like journalists, you know, they arrested the journalist that was actually filming the J six protest, right? The person was just filming it, and so again, I think though um, you should have a vest or something saying you're a journalist, though, so you don't get misconstrued with the rest, and you should have valid credentials, right? That you should show. Right, because again, you're just trying to take pictures, you're trying to capture the moment, right? The truth in that moment, right? And so they did, in fact, let I think that journalist go, but not you know, he was arrested, he was booked, etc., right? Or whatever. So, again, um, you know, and again, there's a lot of risk, there's a lot of risk when people go to you know, war torn countries or even corrupt countries to try to you know, gather information and, and tell the world, right? The truth. You know, a lot of journalists have, have died because of it. They put their lives on the line because of it. You know, I'm a vet. I'm a U.S. US Army veteran. And a lot of my brothers and sisters have given their, their lives, the ult- paid the ultimate sacrifice, right? It's selfless service. And similarly, journalism, that's the way it should be, selfless service, right? Um, because you get out there and you just want to make a difference. And, you know, again, you're seeking the truth, Okay, but any more journalism has become selfish and that people are looking out for themselves, their brand, right? It shouldn't matter, though. It doesn't matter if you're left or right leaning. You should just report the truth just straight up, okay? Regardless, and allow the people to make their own determination, right, and opinion based upon the truth that you're reporting. That's the way it's supposed to be, okay? That's the way it's supposed to be. That's being responsible and ethical, right? Um, so, you know, journalism can also help build a sense of community. So, you know, um, members of a community can come together, you know, many times because of a shared interest or identity. Um, however, in other cases, it's when something negative happens, which brings people together, right? Look what happened after 9-11, right? It brought a lot of New Yorkers, New York, when I lived there in 2018, um, you know, that is the Mecca of immigrants, Right. Ellis Island, etc. Right, it's known for that, and you know historically, and it's huge. It's huge, and you have the different boroughs and things. But I was actually taken aback at how the self segregation of the different communities are there. Okay, there are some blended, but there are some specific. You know, if you go there, you'll see how there's self segregation in those communities, and I was kind of I was taken aback by that because. Um, you know, you have specific Italian communities, you have specific Jamaican communities, you have specific Jewish communities, right? Um, but there's, there's different communities in that, um, even Harlem, right? Harlem is also, Harlem's becoming a little more blended, but it was, it was self-segregated. I was, I was really taken aback by that. I was really baffled by that. Um, 
So, you know, again, people, and I noticed that even, even in the service, I noticed people would self-segregate. So it's, we're blended. We, we actually, in the military, look very similar to, you know, the way the United States is, right? We have all different colors and creeds and nationalities. Well, nationality being, you know, United States. But um, we have, you know, American, you know, and of course, religions and things like that. So, you know, we're a microcosm of the, you know, United States melting pot dichotomy. And but with that, like, for instance, you know, when I was in AIT, right, um, or even basic training, okay, like minded, but like the, um, so for instance, you know, um, you know, the Asian, Asian girls, you know, Asian women would just naturally self segregate. You had the Hispanic women that would naturally, or the Latin X, right, as we call them uh, now, right? They'd self segregate. Uh, black folks self segregate, right? Um, you know, white folk kind of self segregate. But again, I was a person that would just kind of interweave with all of them, right? Because, I mean, they're all my brothers and sisters. So, you know, we all wore green, right? As far as I'm concerned, we were green. You know, I would give my life in the foxhole for any of them, you know, and likewise for me. And I really, you know, bonded with a lot with a lot of those women. Right. Um, So but with that said, you know, um, that's the way society, though, ends up being is people self segregate in in areas of interest or areas of where they feel comfortable, whether it be language or whatever. Right. So, you know, and that goes the same thing, but not with natural disasters and things like hurricanes or, you know, like 9-11, right? The, those, that, those entire regional communities or in like 9-11, it was, you know, the global community actually came together, right? United States, et cetera, and, and others. And of course, in let's just say Florida, right? Those communities, whether they be the county or the town, right? Or the street where maybe a tornado or a, you know, a hurricane hits, right? Then they, they come together as a community. So journalists can also help by providing information, okay, about how to get help and what kind of assistance is available. And they may also report on the efforts of residents to come together and rebuild their neighborhoods, right? Look, journalism is a vital tool in democracy. And one of the most essential things that journalists do is to hold those in power accountable, And by asking tough questions and reporting on the actions of government officials, journalists help keep democracy functioning smoothly. This type of accountability is vital to ensuring that all citizens are treated fairly and have a say in how their community or country is run. Okay, so journalism is important because it helps keep people informed on what is happening around them. It also helps build community and hold people accountable. And by providing perspective and information, journalism plays an important role in our society. Okay. So, you know, again, this is another reason why I am hard pressed on becoming a legitimized journalist, right? Understanding the nuances of journalism um, and get out there and report, but do it right, right? And be featured in major publications, take part in documentaries, you know, do proper investigative journalism, right? But do it right and speak to fact, right? And that's the thing with me being an engineer in cybersecurity. I mean, it's either it's either there or not, okay? So we deal with fact all the time, and that's the way news should be. It should just be fact. Whether you like what's being said or not, again, we're not here to tell you what you want to hear, okay? Sorry, we're here to tell you what you need to hear, and that's the fact, the truth, okay? Not your biased truth, which is perspective and perception and opinion, right? But raw truth, and you may not like it, you may not like what you're hearing, but it's important. It's, it's important ever so, um, I mean, more now than ever, because again, it's really embarrassing, you know? I mean, nobody really trusts what journalists are saying anymore at all. You know, and that's a slap in the face because there's a lot of really good journalists out there that are really doing the hard work, getting out there and trying to report on the truth. You know, and either they're sidelined or whatever, you know, because people, you know, they're not, they're not supporting whatever the, the, the narrative is out there. But the truth is the truth regardless, okay? And again, the First Amendment is the, our constitutional right, you know? It's not a privilege. It's a right that all American citizens have been bestowed, Right? Um, you know, and, you know, definitely don't want them eroded away just because you don't agree with something the same. And, you know, the unfortunate thing is, too, is if you are biased, you know, on, let's just say you don't like Republicans because you think they're all racist, 
but yet there's Republican journalists reporting the truth, right? And maybe, you know, um, against or maybe it gives a different perspective than what the left, a left, you know, um, a liberal reporter is actually stating. But I listen to both. I go and I actually listen to multiple broadcasts uh, from different sources, right? And then I go do my own research, okay? And I determine what the fact is on my own, independent of what I'm hearing, okay? And that's what everybody should be doing. But furthermore, journalists should, there's journalism ethics, right? I mean, and we have a response. We, we have to, you know, adhere to a higher standard, right, of reporting the truth and not allowing our judgment to be clouded just because we want a few likes or, you know, we want, we want to up the ratings and things, right? So some things never even make it to the news because it's not sensationalized enough, right? They don't feel it's going to provide enough ratings. And I think that's bad too, right? We also should be reporting on positive things as much as the negative things, right? You know, everything's not rainbows and unicorns, right? But we should actually infuse the positive in there because honestly, the news, if you watch news every single day, it can provide an element of anxiety. It does. <laughs> so, you know, I end up turning it off and things. But again, you can't trust what's being said. And that's a shame. That's embarrassing. And it's a huge slap in the face to journalism as a whole. And I hope, I mean, I know I'm just one person. I'm little old me. But I hope also... Um, by going through getting trained, getting educated, right? Um, obtaining a degree in that in journalism and public communications and getting out there and supporting our journalism community, fellow journalists, etc. Highlighting the good work that fellow journalists are doing, you know, and providing and just providing the truth. You know, honestly, providing the truth. So I'm really passionate in that and um, I love to write. I love to educate right? And so again, it just goes hand in hand with my entire background, you know, and just report on fact. That's what we do in cyber, right? We report on fact, you know, either, either there is or isn't a risk, can't get around it, right? And so similarly, you know, that's the way journalism should be, whether you like it or not, whether you like what you're hearing or not, you should note that you should actually be able to trust what's being reported is, is the truth. And right now, the public trust has been so eroded, okay? Um, that I don't know if we can ever come back from that. But find journalists that, um, you know, you go in and you can trust. But again, look at different perspectives, though. Don't just watch Fox News, for instance, right? So watch a multitude of, of channels, multitude of newspaper art, you know, period. And you can, again, again subscribe to them digitally, right? Uh, save paper, save, save the planet, right? Um, you know, go to different sources, look at different sources, Right. Do the research and analyses on your own to deduce for yourself whether or not that's fact or fiction. Right. Because many times, too, there's a time limit and there's a limit on, on certain words and things the article should be or a time limit when somebody's vocalizing it right on mainstream media. And so just note that that's a piece of it. OK. They try to hit the high points. But the you know, the further explanation of you know, the details and what have you, right, need to be done on your own, right? So don't be lazy. Go out in there do and do some research for a change, but look at a multitude of sources. I mean, if you're just looking at Al Jazeera, okay, for news on, for instance, what's going on in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas the, in Gaza, then you're going to find that Al Jazeera actually is going to put a spin, a bias towards pro-Hamas, okay, straight up, right? So, I mean, so again, you need to make sure that you were looking at multiple sources, okay? Um, you know, and look at multiple languages too. Like for instance, when I was stationed in Germany, there's even a different perspective there too of what's being reported, even on the global scale. Uh, the BBC, right, in, in, in Great Britain, right? Uh, you know, what's, what's being reported. In, and there's different perspectives, okay, too. But again, everyone should be reporting on the truth, okay? Not your perspective, not your opinion. We're not there to write essays, Journalists are supposed to be reporting on the truth and informing, informing the community in which we serve. Okay, so with that said, this is Anna London with Cyvergence. I hope this is providing value to you, but this lens, I kind of shed some light on, you know, why I am also, um, you know, leaning towards, you know, and I write articles already, but I'm, I'm definitely passionate about 
doing right by the people and, of course, reestablishing that public trust that has been so um, obliterated, right? So eroded um, by other journalism, you know, journalists out there that really just don't care, um, which is which is really, they should lose their jobs. Like, honestly, cut the fat, trim the fat, you know, take out people that are just reporting on opinion, right? And who wants to flip the channels and hear the same thing over and over and over again? You, like you, ABC, NBC, you know, NBC, NPR, you know, uh, CNN, they all say this, it's almost like parrots, right? They all say the same thing. It's an echo chamber. There's nothing original that comes out of that. You listen to one, you listen to them all. So you know that that's biased, you know it is because they're all saying the same thing. They're being told, they're being fed what to say. They're not even doing independent journalism anymore, you know, at all. They're being fed what they say. They read a teleprompter, right? They're told what to say. And that's no way to inform the public. That's no way to run um, a media company at all. It might, yeah, help ratings, okay? But um, there, there's just, the, 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 it's an establishment, obviously, um, and it's quite obvious. I mean, if you put common sense to it, right? Just put the, use, like, use your common sense approach. I don't trust everything on Fox either. Newsmax, the Newsmax actually allows for, I know it's known to be right-leaning, but there's actually some people on there that are quite moderate. And so I actually like Newsmax, to be quite honest with you. I found there's some that are right-leaning and um, they there's some, you know, but there's a lot of moderates out there that kind of are independents, right? They you know, in, independent in thought, and they just report the truth. And so I appreciate that. I have great respect for journalists that do that. Um, so anyways, with that said, this is Anna London with Cybergence signing out.